At any given time, hundreds of salamanders are being bred at the University of Kentucky. I direct the Ambistoma Genetic Stock Center. We maintain the world's largest captive bred salamander population. Ambistoma is the scientific name of the salamander that we maintain. The common name is the Mexican axolotl. Almost on a daily basis, people call us up requesting materials. Hey, do you have some embryos? Do you have some larvae? Do you have some adults? At this time, there are about 150 research labs in the world that use salamanders and depend upon our genetic stock facility, as well as the genomic studies that we're pursuing to help move their research programs forward. With funding from the National Institutes of Health, from the National Science Foundation, and the Army Research Office, biologist Randall Voss maintains and studies a unique species of salamander that may one day help people with spinal cord and limb injuries. Mexican axolotls were originally collected from large lakes around present-day Mexico City over 100 years ago. They're amazing because they can regenerate so many of their body parts, their digits, their limbs, parts of their eyes. They can even repair damage to their brains and their spinal cords. Among all vertebrate models, they show the greatest regenerative capacity and that's why they're important model. The funding we receive is important because it's allowing us to study the genome of the Mexican axolotl to reveal the underlying basis of regeneration. And importantly, we're sharing this information with other researchers. The axolotl has a very large genome. It's an order of magnitude larger than the human genome. These advances in DNA sequencing technologies that have happened because of the Human Genome Project, essentially every organism's genome will be sequenced. We're taking a very innovative approach. We're using a laser capture microscope that will allow us to isolate single chromosomes one at a time. Fossil salamanders are interesting to researchers for more reasons than tissue regeneration. They have found a way to postpone growing up. Typically, amphibians have two phases to their life. In the first phase, they're totally aquatic embryos that develop into tadpoles or larvae. Then, after a period of larval development, they undergo a metamorphosis. They lose those traits or characteristics that were important for living in water like the external gills and the keeled tail fin that allows them to swim. So at metamorphosis, they lose those traits and they gain traits which allow them to live on land. So axolotls deviate from this pattern. They block metamorphosis and they maintain those juvenile characteristics into the adult phase of life. They truly look like teenagers at the time in which they die. Voss uses thyroid hormone to turn these perpetually aquatic teenagers into terrestrial adults. This allows him to find the genes responsible for variations in the timing of metamorphosis and genes linked to regeneration after metamorphosis. Can we identify genes that explain variation in some parameter of regeneration? There does seem to be genes that control the rate of regeneration. It's easy for us to imagine that our eye color can be blue or brown or a flower can have purple or red color, and those are determined by one gene. But most of the traits that we care about are very complicated in their nature. And how long we live, how much we weigh, or the time at which we metamorphose, or the rate at which we regenerate, is probably determined by hundreds to thousands of genes. And each of those are making some kind of statistical contribution to that overall variation. In this complex research, support is crucial to providing high-quality salamander resources to biomedical researchers. Shared scientific equipment, like the laser capture microscope he uses to select single chromosomes, purchased with NIH funds, is key to his and other research at the University of Kentucky. Somebody with very minimal training can go over there and just laser out small numbers of cells, or in this case, chromosomes. And so one of the great things about UK is that we've got a number of these kind of common core facilities and the instrumentation is there, the expertise is there to help you. No single organism provides the best model for every human disease or health concern. NIH recognizes the importance of maintaining a diverse portfolio of animal models, including the Mexican axolotl, given its central role it plays in regenerative biology and medicine. We are proud to be associated with the group of research resource directors to better enable biomedical research.